Hi, you guys. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, if you've been here with me for a minute, welcome back. If you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. So if you are new to the channel, I'm a registered nurse here in New York City. And my content is is mainly gonna my my content is mainly gonna be about nursing but of course we'll sprinkle some other stuff in there um i recently experienced something that i feel a lot of women especially could resonate with but i'm gonna share and i'm gonna talk about that when the time is right um can't wait to talk about it though can't wait and I have my and I'll have my daughter with me because we'll be discussing it together I can't wait for that that's coming soon though in the next couple of weeks we're just trying to sort through some things but that will come soon and I can't wait so okay um today's video so you think you want to become a nurse as you guys know right I have my handy dandy notes I love to write down things and I love to like you know, just stay on topic. I don't want to be long-winded. I don't want to hold you guys for a long time. I just really want to talk about, you know, whatever the topic is and stay on that topic, right? So, you think you want to become a nurse. Okay, so let's get started. Um, when you're becoming a nurse, right, you have to be very clear, very clear on why you're becoming a nurse, right? I remember being... The year may have been 2002 or 2003. Can't really remember the year exactly, but I remember um, prior to me, if you guys don't know, I always lived in Queens. From the time I was young, I lived in Queens with my aunt. My aunt raised me. Prior to living in Queens, I lived in in Harlem with my grandparents. So, okay, the year is like 2002, 2003. Um, I remember going to see my grandfather and I remember him being very sick. My grandfather was a guy who was very like, how can I say, he was a little busybody. Like he liked to be outside. He loved to go to the supermarket, the meat market. You know, he, he like he loved to drive and you know, I remember when he I remember when he first got sick. I remember he was in his room and he was just laying there and he just didn't look well. And I went to we were leaving we were leaving his house and um I remember going to his room to tell him bye and tell him that I would see him next time and he just didn't look well and he was just like I asked him, I was like you know, Grandpa Jesse, how how are you feeling? And he's just like, uh, I don't feel so good. I don't feel so good. And I was like, hmm, he doesn't look good. This is the middle of the day. And my like my cousins and my family could vouch that like my grandfather used to like stay up during it. He would go to sleep early, but he would be up during the day watching New York one in his favorite chair in the living room. But this day he was in his room just like sleeping like on and off the whole time we were there. So I remember him saying, uh, he was like trying to trying to say that he was okay, but then also saying that he wasn't really feeling well. So I was like, ah, uh, okay. My grandmother didn't have, my grandmother wasn't there at the time. So I was like, I made it a point in my head to like call her later on when we got home to tell her that, you know, I, I don't think that he's doing too good. Uh, I don't think he's feeling well, rather. So I remember that night going home and we used to always call grandma when we got home to let her know that we was going home or, or that we made it home, rather. So I called her later on that night and I was like, you know, Grams, I don't think uh, Grandpa Jesse is doing too good I don't think he's okay she's like yeah I know something something is going on I don't really know quite what it is but something is going on so I was like okay and um 
come to find out my my grandfather did have to go into the hospital and then he did go into a nursing home he did have prostate cancer so i remember from then knowing then at that moment i knew i wanted to be a nurse i knew i wanted to help people i knew i wanted to like I didn't know the word advocate back then, but that's what we would say now. I knew I wanted to be able to advocate for people and, you know, help people in their time of need. So from then, I knew that I wanted to be a nurse, right? All right. So when you're, when you're going to nursing school or when you're making it up in your mind that you want to be a nurse, your why is very important. Understanding the why is very important, right? Money... Let's let's be very clear. Money should not be the only reason as to why a person is going into nursing. Yes, when picking a career, money is definitely a factor, but it should not be the only emphasis on only reason as to why you choose this particular career career field. You have to you have to have a certain level of compassion. You have to have a desire to want to help people. And that's just it. If you're doing anything solely for money, you'll be miserable and it will show in your work. So over the last couple of years, especially since the pandemic started, social media has glamorized nursing. And too many times people get into the field just worried about the money and thinking that it is something that it is not. Right? So when you become a nurse... Like, seriously, you actually have to give a fuck about people. You actually have to care about people. And if you know in your heart of hearts that you, you're you not one of those type of people, and that's okay. But if you know in your heart of hearts that you just could care less about people and that you're not a people person, just reconsider. Reconsider because it's it's not the field for you. And like I said before, you know... Social media has glamorized nursing and it's it, it shows the cars and the houses and the money and all those type of things. But it comes with a lot of other things that, you know, is not really talked about. Like, literally, I've had vomit on me. I've had shit on my hands. I've had blood on me, all type of bodily fluids I've had on me. And in that moment, like I was like, oh, this is good. <laughs> like, this is nasty, but it's a part of the job. It just happens. And you have to be okay with things like that just happening. You have to be okay with people being sick and in pain and not really understanding what's going on with them and them asking you a million questions and their families asking you a million questions. You have to be okay with that, right? So let's start from the beginning. Let's start from when you're in nursing school. So when you first begin nursing school, right, it's it's a new adventure. It's a new thing, right? So anything new is going to bring about some level of anxiety. You know, it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be different, right? So when you get into nursing school, I suggest, I highly suggest that you surround yourself with a group of like-minded people, right? A group of people who want to win for themselves and who also want you to win. It's very important. Like I've come across so many people that say, you know, I can do this by myself. I can do this on my own. And you probably can't. I'm not saying that you can't, but I'm just saying it's just it makes it better when you have people around you who have the same goals as you, who wants you to win, who's going to push you every step of the way. It's very important. I became a nurse five years ago, and some of the closest people to me I have met in nursing school. And five years ago, things change. People, people get married. People have children. Life just changes, and I can honestly say that Whoever was my friend in nursing school, I'm still friends with them. I can honestly say that I'm still rooting for them in whatever it is that they got going on. And I'm pretty sure I can 100% and confidently say that the people that I'm rooting for are rooting for me too. So there's that, right? So now you have your, 
you have your group of uh, you, you have your core group of friends that you're cool with that y'all y'all say okay I'm gonna get we're gonna get through this program and we're gonna get through it together no girl left behind all right so y'all do this y'all get together and now it's time to kick ass and get through the program right so I would suggest y'all form study groups select days and times that works for everyone and y'all go over the material together i suggest before before meeting in the group you go over the material by yourself see what you know you know read whatever it is whatever chapters it is that you're supposed to be reading read whatever it is you're supposed to be reading question yourself quiz yourself like there's so many free resources out there like you can go on Google, there's Quizlet, there's so many things. Make sure you, before you come to this study group that you have a clear understanding of what the material is. And I'm not saying that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not saying that everything is going to be 100% clear to you, but at least have a basic foundation of what the topic is. And this way, when you come to the group, even if you have to like write down or jot down little questions or whatever, when you come to the group now, you can ask, I'll use any name, Samantha, for an example. I'll ask Samantha, Samantha, did you, th I read this. What was your interpretation of it? This is what I got. What, what did you see it as? You know, that's just, you know, like, because your friend can maybe break it down in a way for you, in a way that you can understand, right? So... Okay, there's that. Know that certain classes are going to be knowledge-based, like your microbiology, like your AMP ones and twos. So when I was in nursing school, we took AMP with a nursing course. Most, because it was an accelerated program. So mo most nursing um, schools have you take like AMP one and two prior to the program. But like for us, it was incorporated with the nursing courses so i certain classes is just going to be like knowledge based like what is a cell what is a tissue dna is this or chromosomes is this or whatever the case may be right and then you have classes like microbiology once again that's knowledge based and you have your advanced classes like um ob which is obstetrics um that's knowledge based like it is what is uh fetal deceleration or whatever the hell because i wasn't too good in that class so don't get me to lying but i'm just saying like um what is this or what is that those are knowledge based right and then you have your courses that are um critical thinking more of think outside of the box more of okay this is what's going on what are you, the nurse, going to do? You have to learn to think like a nurse. Before you become a nurse, you got to learn to think like a nurse, which was hard. I'm not going to say it's not hard, but it's definitely doable, right? So then you have like your med search courses. Now, something that I learned towards the end of the program, which I thought was kind of bullshit. Like, I feel like that's something that they probably should have taught us in the beginning, but we didn't. I personally didn't learn it to the end was so in your med search courses you're going to have a whole bunch of disease processes right you're going to have like hypertension diabetes just to name a few right you're going to have a whole bunch of um disease processes and how I learned at the end of the program to study was you take the disease process number one know what the disease process is, right? Then know how the patient will present, meaning what some signs and symptoms that the person will exhibit, right? Okay. Know, anticipate what tests will be ordered. Know what kind of diet the person should be eating once they have this particular disease process, what type of things that they should avoid, right? And then teaching, what are you as a nurse going to teach a patient? right? It's, 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 it's very simple when you break it down that way. It's a lot to learn and it's a lot to grasp. But, but if I'm telling you, if you take each disease process, whatever it is for that particular week or that particular class session, take whatever disease process 
it is and you break it down like that, it'll make it much easier for you to for, for you to number one study no, and, and easier for you to pass your classes, which will eventually um, pass your test and then which will eventually help you to pass your courses, right? So that's that about nursing school. So let's move on. Let's say now you you've um you've passed nursing school you've made it through and now you're studying for NCLEX right so for me material knowing the material yes is important for me but knowing how to answer the questions is more important at least for when I took the NCLEX that's how it was for me so questions 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 and understanding why your answer is this versus that. So the first time, so like I said, the first, like I said a couple of videos ago, the first time I took my NCLEX exam, I did not pass. I was not successful in passing. Um, I just used one thing, which was, I believe it was um, UWorld, which a lot of people only used UWorld and they passed. So I figured I could only use um, UWorld and pass as well, but <laughs> that wasn't, the case for me. Um, so I would suggest you use two, two different type of question banks. Whatever it is that you know, you know, right? And whatever it is that you get wrong, you write down the reason as to why the answer, because what they do is they give you the questions, you answer it, and then it gives you a rationale behind it, right? So whatever the rationale is, write down the rationale. Once you write down the rationale and you read it over and over and over, it'll become second nature and, and it will stick. So the second time around, I used UWorld and I used um, Kaplan. For me, the second time when I took the test, Kaplan, the, 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 the test reminded me a lot of Kaplan. So I could contribute me passing... I could say, you know, Kaplan helped me more than you will, but that's just me. Um, but I do suggest you use two different test banks um, or two different study guides or however it is it's worded. And you do questions from those two different resources. And then you, you know, you sit for your exam once you feel comfortable. All right. So moving along, you now you've passed nursing school, you've passed the NCLEX. Now you start looking for a job. Once you find a job, right? And one thing I don't suggest new grads do, this is a mistake that I made. <clears throat> I needed a job, like by the time I had passed my NCLEX and started looking for jobs, I had been needed a job. Like things was getting crazy. I needed a, I needed a job like two years prior to. So I got my, I took the first job that came, which was a case management job. And I think that, that was a mistake on my part. I just heard the salary and they were willing to hire new grads and I just jumped on it. I don't suggest anyone do that. I feel like as a new grad nurse, you should get your feet wet in regards to like, maybe like a hospital, the nursing home, the skills, like you should learn skills. You should learn how to properly speak to doctors. There's just certain things that you should do before you go into case management. Case management is more of a Monday through Friday kind of thing, which a lot of us are looking for because for whatever reason, maybe we have kids, maybe our spouse's uh, job, you know, just the Monday through Friday life would be best for us. But I don't suggest you do that. I suggest you find a hospital job or find a nursing home job, learn the skills, learn your meds. You know, maybe two years down the line, if you feel like, okay, I've had enough of this, I can't learn any more than what I already know. And then and then if the opportunity presents itself and you really want to do case management, then go into case management, but not as a new grad, right? So, okay, so let's say you let's say you get a hospital job, right? You get your hospital job. Most the way how I've seen it set up is um, you would have some classroom time where they would teach you certain things. 
um, teach you certain skills. And then after the classroom time is up, you would go to the unit, whatever unit you're going to be assigned to, and you are assigned to a preceptor, right? So while you're with your preceptor, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity because you have a seasoned nurse now, right? So this is your opportunity to learn as much as you can. This is your opportunity to become a sponge and soak up everything that you can from this nurse. Be her shadow. Everywhere she goes, you follow, except for to the bathroom. Don't follow her to the bathroom, but wherever else she goes, you make sure you follow her, right? Walk with a notebook, please. Don't feel like you know it all. Don't feel like you're going to remember things because you're not, right? Walk with a notebook. Take notes. Ask tons of questions. Know that no question is a dumb question. The only dumb thing is to sit there and not really understand something and not let your preceptor know that you don't understand, right? Also, too, learn from your CNAs or you know, you may work in a facility where they call them patient care techs. Learn from your techs. Now, let me tell you something. A lot of these techs know a lot. I, I will say that I've learned from a tech how to straight cat the patient. I learned from a tech how to put in a Foley. Um, certain skills in regards to patient care, I've learned from techs. So don't be, don't think that because this person is a tech, you can't learn from nothing from them. Don't be one of those nurses that be so high and mighty and be like, I'm, oh, I'm the nurse. What can I possibly learn from you? Don't have that kind of attitude because you will get knocked on your ass every single time. And I've learned over the last couple of years within working in these various facilities that I've worked in, I've learned that it's better to you don't have to kiss anybody's ass but it's better to just be nice to them because then you can kind of you can you can learn from them and they'll help you out they'll help you do certain things you know like i've had some texts come to me and be like nurse i know this patient has a wound but i see you busy so i'm i'm going to when i'm doing my care i'm going to change the wound and i'm going to tell you what it looks like i'm going to tell you if it was different from yesterday whatever the case may be yes it is your responsibility as a nurse to do um your wound care changes i'm not saying that it's not but what i'm saying is sometimes you are so busy and the day is so hectic and there's a lot going on and this tech knows the patient and they know that they can just quickly do it and just come back to you and report there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you as the nurse know that, okay, you at least, especially like if you're gonna have these patient, this one patient, like your three shifts that you're doing, you should at least look at it once or twice to know, okay, well, this is what the text said and this is what I'm and this is what I'm seeing. The two mesh, they coincide, so whatever. You know in your heart of hearts that you at least eyeballed your patient, right? And that you didn't solely depend on the tech. But some days, we let's be honest, we just have those hectic days, right? So go into it with a positive attitude. Know that that it's a team. It's a team effort. Know that the patients don't belong to just us. The patients belong to the techs. The patients belong to the doctors. And we're all a team. And we're all trying to do ultimately what's right and what's best for the patient, right? So... You know, um, and once you start working, just, just never be afraid to learn new things. Never be afraid to be exposed to new things. Those things that scare you the most, like for me, what scared me the most was IV insertion. Now I could do it with my eyes closed. I did learn from one of my good, good friends, um, that I did a contract with, I did learn from her and now I can do it with my eyes closed. I used to avoid it. And then when she showed me how to do it, like when I really learned and saw how to do it, now it's like, okay, I'm I'm first. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm quickly running to that and doing that because now I feel so confident in my ability to do it. So I say that to say those things that you're most afraid of, run to it. Don't let it, don't let it deter you. Don't let it scare you. 
do it. You know, there's going to be a lot of skills that we're going to have to learn that don't make you feel most, that don't make you feel confident or you don't feel comfortable doing, but those are the things that you got to gravitate towards so that, you know, you can know that you know how to do it. So I hope you guys have found this video informative. Um, what are some questions that you guys have regarding nursing school, regarding hospitals, regarding nursing homes, whatever, whatever questions you have, I'll try my best to answer. So let's talk about it and I'll see you guys in the next one.